First, uh, I want to uh, thank uh, <clears throat> ICT Khatta for inviting me to this conference. I'm actually really excited to be here. Uh, I'm hoping uh, all of you are here to learn a lot more about uh, blogging, but at the same time, from my perspective, I'm actually really looking forward to learning from all of you. So being on the engineering side at Google, one of the things that I'm very, uh, actually the whole team is really excited about, is to really take the products we've already uh, launched already and make them more locally relevant to the Middle East and North Africa. So uh, if you have, for example, specific suggestions, blogger, other products, come and grab me later on and I'd be happy to talk to you more about uh, any of the issues that you might have and see if we can do something about it. So not only are we making our products more locally relevant, at the same time, we're looking specifically to understand what the nuances are within the Middle East and perhaps also create new products for the region. So if you want to follow me on, uh, on, on Twitter, in my, uh, my, uh, it's, uh, it's A. Hamzawi right there, so you can actually look, uh, you can use that. Uh, what I want to first start talking about is uh, some of the, the stats about uh, Google Blogger itself. And it sounds like from the uh, questionnaire that went out, almost half of, of those uh, surveyed uh, did use Blogger. So if you look at Blogger today, right now there's about 290,000 words being written per minute. Not only that, right around 400 million words are written per day on Blogger. And that's over 10 million content creators per month. It's really startling. If you look at it also, every month globally there's around 300 million visitors to various Blogger uh, uh, blogs worldwide. So for example, in the next 20 minutes during this presentation, there will be approximately 2,000 blogs being created about 30,000 posts that people are going to be writing worldwide, and I believe it's right around 6 million words that will be written on Blogger. So I also want to talk, uh, since this topic is more related to the Middle East and North Africa, I want to talk a little bit more about MENA, which is the Middle East and North Africa. This is the acronym. Uh, the population uh, within the region is roughly around 337 million. 5% of the world's population, if you look at the, uh, the statistics even deeper than that, uh, the population is also very young. A third of the population is actually less than 14 years old. Uh, from my perspective, we look at it as 18 countries throughout the Middle East, North Africa. Arabic is spoken roughly around 80% throughout the region. And the latest stats that we have is around 54 million Internet users are actually online right now, which is roughly about 16% of uh, the total population. The projection based on uh, one of the sources I've quoted here is right around 83 million in 2013. So the number is going up quite a bit. So one of the key things that uh, we're most interested in, and I'm sure everybody here is also interested in, is the lack of Arabic content. So one thing that we see a lot of is the fact that relative to the amount of content, there's a huge thirst for the information. So many people are searching in Arabic, but might not actually necessarily be solving or actually, look, actually finding the information that they're looking for online. And this is a huge issue. So one of the things we're trying to do at Google is also to empower you all, providing you the tools and the products and the services that you need to be able to do this in Arabic. Arabic in general has a very rich heritage, uh, heritage and culture. Uh, it's fifth, sp fifth most spoken language worldwide. In addition to that, about 3% of the internet users worldwide speak Arabic, which is actually uh, not too high. If you look at this graph here on the right, you'll notice that Arabic falls right around eighth worldwide in terms of the actual top 10 languages on the internet. Another number that we've found, so if you take all of the information that's actually available online today that we've actually crawled, roughly about 1% of all of that information across all the different languages is in Arabic. One thing you've probably seen if you actually do uh, searches in Arabic, you'll find that a lot of your search results come from forums. So this is one thing I wanted to point out, and there's a question about this earlier. Forums in the Middle East is a very dominant force. This is something that you need to keep, uh, keep that in mind, especially from a blogging perspective. The other point uh, I wanted to mention is, uh, just as another data point for you all, is on the Wikipedia side, which was talked about a few times already, Arabic there is actually ranked right around 27th, with also very consistent with what we found, right around 1% of all the pages or the articles created on Wikipedia are available in Arabic. Talk a little bit more about some facts, and we're actually later on we're going to dive into some, some live demos to make it more interesting. Right now, uh, there's an explosive growth in Blogger. What's really interesting to know is that we're getting now maj the majority of our traffic coming from outside of the United States. So what we're seeing is, especially in emerging markets, right around uh, 37, well, obviously the delta here is, is exactly what it says, but what we're seeing, especially in the Arabic world, within the Middle East and North Africa, we're seeing a lot of growth. And this is, something, this is one of the reasons why we're very excited to come here and present to you all. So to give you another idea, when we, uh, when we acquired the, uh, uh, the company Blogger back in 2003, there were roughly around 250,000 30-day active users. And what that really means is in the, in, the, in the period of, in the span of about a month, 
an ac a user actually had gone to one of the different blogs that are hosted on, on Blogger. Today, that's, of course, mushroomed over 300 million, quite a lot of growth there. If you also look at uh, some other statistics, about 120,000 new blogs are created a day and uh, about 2 million posts a day. Another interesting fact that you might want to be, uh, let me just turn this one off. Another interesting fact that you might, uh, uh, you might be interested in is the fact that Arabic itself is not among the top 10 languages used on Blogger and WordPress. So, uh, so this actually points to an interesting, uh, an, interesting point, uh, an interesting point that I had mentioned previously is that while people actually aren't necessarily writing as much in Arabic, there's a huge amount of reading done in Arabic on Blogger, for example. So while it's not in the top 10 for actually creating uh, blog posts in Arabic, it's one of the top 10 when it comes to reading on bloggers. This is a really interesting statistic for you all. One thing I'm going to show you uh, here, and we're going to demo this tool later for you, is uh, the fact that the actual blogging, the blogosphere here, or the interest in blogging is rising. And this is actually coming from Google Insights for Search. And it basically shows you the, uh, the overall interest level of the word mudawana, which is blogging in, uh, in English. Uh, sorry, in English, exactly. If you look at it over time, you can see the overall growth level. The interest level in that specific word has been rising over time. And you can see... Got it. I guess I'm talking too fast. Uh, so you can see basically the interest level in, uh, in the actual word itself is rising over time, which is really interesting. I actually have two graphs below. I don't, I'm not sure if you can see them. I'll, I'll, look, I'll read, them for, read them out for you really quickly. But on the countryside, if you look at the regional interest level of that specific word across the Middle East, which countries are most interested in that word? And I'll just read, for example, the top few here. Libya, you have Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Morocco, and Yemen. And you need to, keep, you need to take this into consideration that it's not the case that in Libya, the word Madawan is the most popular query. That is not the case. What this shows is, specifically in Libya, relative to the other countries in the Middle East, there, proportionally speaking, there is a higher amount of interest for that word relative to other words. If we look at it from a different perspective, across all the different cities in the Middle East that we, that we track data for, uh, what are the ones that express the most amount of interest uh, for this specific word again? We have uh, Zahran here in Saudi Arabia, we have uh, Jeddah also, Rabat in Morocco, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Alexandria, and Cairo. So you'll see here, actually in the top, uh, let's see, the top seven, pretty much dominated by Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Morocco. So I'll switch over, I'll switch gears now, I'll start talking about promoting your blog. And this is really more about understanding what your users want and to be able to write in a way that actually generates more traffic for you. Before we get into too many details, I want to talk about the importance of search. Of course, being from Google, we, uh, we, uh, we talk about search all the time. But I'm going to give you a very uh, simple view of search. The, the basic idea is that we want to take what users actually want, which is actually what they're typing, and from that extract the intent of their actual query, and take that with what's offered online, which is the full set of documents that we've actually crawled online. What we then do is we rank all the pages uh, on the internet relative to your specific query and your intent, and see how well it matches. So we look, for example, at keywords to see if the, uh, the specific keywords that were typed from the user matches keywords that you've written, for example, in your blog. We also look at over 200 different signals. One of them is, uh, is page rank, which I'll talk about again uh, in a second. But reputation is really important. This is something that Jeremiah touched on. And you need to take this into consideration when you're blogging. So it's basically in this, in this sense, at a very high level, it's really around how many sites have actually linked to you, in addition to how many, or it's in addition to also the sites that you're linking to from within your blog. Page rank. Is basically de is uh, determined by the number of actual the number and the importance of the links that are actually pointing to you in your blog. So if you're creating a blog, you're likely going to have, for example, citations by other bloggers and other sites, for example. And so in those cases, the more people that are actually referring to your blog or to your to your blog posts, Google is going to look at that at your blog and say, well, this that's most likely the case that your blog is much more authoritative compared to other specific blogs or documents on the net that refer to those same keywords. So it's important, for example, that you promote your blog in ways, and we'll talk about some of those different ways, for example, on Twitter, and on Facebook, within forms, for example. So in terms of tasks, what you really want to be thinking about are the following. You really want to understand what are users looking for within your blog. So you want to understand the specific keywords that they might be using within search, for example. So while you might be talking about, say, the floods in Saudi Arabia, you might want to know specifically what are these, the other words that they may be using in relation to 
uh, that specific topic to better drive traffic to your blog. And we'll talk about one of the, uh, the tools that allow you to do that. You're also going to be looking at increasing, perhaps, the use of keywords within your blog. Okay? And this is basically around content gaps. So you're looking for gaps in content in the sense that there may be specific keywords uh, that uh, better reflect the, the topic at hand. And so you might be talking about something very naturally in your blog, which is great. You might also want to take into consideration other specific words that might drive more traffic to your blog. And then we talked previously about increasing the number of inbound and outbound links to your blog. This is, again, really important. And then at the same time, consider also that when you are writing, keep your blog posts very focused. So if you're talking about, for example, South, uh, floods in Saudi Arabia, you want to make sure that you're not also talking about many other topics in the same blog post. That's going to also confuse the user when they're doing searches and they're going to get this blog post return in search results when they look at it. But at the same time, what, you, what you'll find in, uh, in addition to that is your page rank may actually drop and the other signals related to the concepts that are returned by search may drop accordingly. So you want to keep your blog post very focused on the actual topic that you're writing about. And your links, like I said before, convey authority. Watch out also for link spam uh, within your comments. So Jeremiah was talking about going on a site and adding comments and whatnot. You might find in specific blogs that you'll see a lot of people adding links that go to, say, uh, malware sites, for example. So you want to understand exactly who is leaving comments for you on your website and probably clicking through to get a sense for exactly what it is there. Uh, their website, for example, might be promoting. That will actually affect your reputation of your website. So if you actually are pointing to specific websites that may be perceived as malware or spam and so on and so forth, you want to definitely take care of those. In addition to that, we talked a little bit about before around using social media tools. And the idea here is that you want to use tools that, uh, that complement Blogger. For example, Facebook, uh, Twitter, you also want to consider perhaps using forums, engaging in a community that is related to the topic that you actually are talking about or that you're a specialist in. And the idea there, especially in the Middle East, given that forums are very popular, you want to be looking for forums that are related to your topic. Go ahead and communicate and actually uh, participate in those forums. You could also have a signature, for example, within uh, that forum site that includes, for example, a link to your blog or referring to blog posts that are pertinent to the conversation you're having. You also want to consider participating in other blogs or acting as a guest blogger in somebody else's blog that is perceived as generating higher traffic. So we'll talk a little bit here about how to monetize your blog. And this is where we're going to dive into some of the tools. So I know I, ha I have about six or seven tools I'm going to show you. So I'll try to go So If I'm going too fast, just let me know. But uh, very quickly, monetization is really around, so let's say you do have a blog. right? What you might want to consider is you might want to consider making some revenue off of the actual blog itself. Right? And there's different ways you can do that. Uh, Jeremiah touched on different networks uh, that you could use to do that. I will touch on, for the purpose of this discussion, around uh, Google AdSense. And we'll touch also on a little bit uh, on FeedBurner, which is more on the, the web feed side. So I'll just switch over here. And uh, basically within AdSense, so I have a, an example AdSense account here. Uh, if I go, for example, to AdSense Setup, you'll find one of them. Let's just see if it's working. Okay, so I'll go ahead and log in. By the way, if you don't have an AdSense, the first thing you need to do, of course, if you're looking to advertise uh, with Google AdSense is you have to create an account. And this is, of course, where uh, the checks for the, the payments will be going to. So one of, the, uh, one of the things you could do with an AdSense, for example, is AdSense for feeds. And there's two different ways, or there's two main ways that people will get access to your blog. One is via your blog directly. The other way is via web feeds. So there are two different uh, main, main, I guess, methods. One is called an Atom uh, feed and also the RSS feed. In general, they're just, just termed as web feeds. And the idea here is that you want to be, some users may be using, for example, a web reader that actually um, aggregates uh, web feeds. And in that sense, it's very hard for you, if you're actually looking to monetize, to be able to have ads specifically in your web feed. And what FeedBurner does, for example, it allows you to embed ads within the RSS feed itself or the Atom feed so that they appear within the person's reader. So this is, for example, is the actual AdSense for feeds right here. And I've actually added this as one of my, uh, my different programs. So this is the one right here. And you can see within AdSense, there's many different uh, methods that you can use within AdSense. The one you're going to want to use when it comes to web fees is AdSense for feeds. Okay? 
And then here, basically, you'll describe how frequent you actually want uh, the ad to appear. You can determine, you can say, for example, how long the post should be to trigger an ad. You can talk about the position of the actual ad itself, in, it, in addition to controlling the types of ads that you may want to show or not show uh, within your blog. So I'll switch over very quickly, and I'll show you Blogger dashboard here. And uh, for those that are familiar with Blogger, you'll probably uh, recognize this. So I'll go ahead and look at settings. And very quickly, within a matter of seconds, you can very, you can very simply add AdSense, uh, not only on your website, but also on the RSS side. You can see this is just a sample uh, uh, blog that I've created here. And with it, AdSense for here, basically, what I would have done is, at least on the AdSense for feed side, I would have basically created the AdSense for feed via feed burner. We'll come here. Actually, let me do this. Let me switch back, and I will create a new blog very quickly. Okay, I'll just get this in. Probably taken also, let's just see. Okay, so I'll very quickly create a blog, and you're actually gonna see this in one of the workshops later on in the afternoon. But basically from here, I click on monetize, so I've created my blog. Within AdSense here, within Blogger, I'm, I'm sorry, you can actually determine where exactly you want those ads to appear within your blog. So you can decide, for example, I want them on the right, I want them at the bottom, uh, or both. So in this case, I'll just say both. I'll go ahead and click next. And basically you're done. Now, this assumes, of course, you've created an AdSense account, and it's what happens that I did, and this is why you'll see my AdSense publisher ID. And so very quickly, if I click on View Blog, there's nothing really in my blog yet because I haven't written anything. You'll actually see right here, ads appearing. And so the more traffic you drive to your website, the more money you are actually going to be making. And you can have, there, there are many discussions around, well, when does it make sense uh, to start advertising? And that's, the, uh, that's a discussion that you need to be thinking about. There's a lot of resources online that maybe can help you uh, gauge that. So I'll switch over now. I'm not going to get into too many details around FeedBurner. We're going to talk about that later on, so I encourage you, if uh, those that are more interested in some of the tools I'm going to show, to attend Jeremiah's talk later on this afternoon. So we'll talk a little bit now about user trends and behaviors, and talking about the different tools that you might actually want to use to monitor online trends. So he, these are some of the tools that you can actually use to understand what users are actually doing on the net today. So we'll talk about keyword tool, insights for search, hot trends, and very quickly we'll touch on analytics. So keyword tool, the idea with keyword tool is to find frequently used terms that users are searching for and to look for, for other keywords that are synonyms of that. So for example, if I go, and I'll actually show you this live instead. And by the way, any of the tools that I'm going to show you, if you just type in keyword tools, it'll, it'll actually be the first link uh, that appears in search results. So here is the uh, keyword tool tool that's actually part of AdWords, but in your case as a blogger, you can also use this. Now what you want to type in for here, uh, in here for example, is say you're doing a blog post around games in Arabic. And I'll just switch to my uh, Arabic keyboard here, and I'll actually demo this later. So I will do a search, for example, for al -Aib. Okay, so I'll type in al in Arabic here, and I'll actually switch this. So I want to see results that are in Arabic across all countries. I'll then just type this in. Hopefully I get it right. And what you'll see here basically is queries that are very that are actually related to the word, the actual query al across the world. So you look, for example, the global monthly search volume of that specific query is roughly 37 million. If you can look at it locally for November, for example, you'll see that uh, it's, of course, uh, the same thing. But the nice thing here is you can get a sense for, if you're actually talking about al -Aib in your post, and you can, of course, pick any query you'd like, you can get a sense for what kind of traffic is related to that specific query and how much traffic it is actually generating. So if you look down here, I don't know if you can see this. So you can look, for example, and you can see other queries that are very popular. For example, al -Aib Banat, uh, for some reason, is actually really popular. And the next one is al -Aib Sayarat. So al Banat, I was kind of wondering what that was. We were very curious to see what that was. And it turns out it's a, uh, it's a bunch of flash games for kids that allow them to dress up 
uh, basically uh, uh, dolls, so to speak. And so this seems to be really popular in the Middle East. So anyways, the point here is that you can actually use this to determine what are other keywords that are similar to the actual concepts you're talking about and use that specifically within your blog. That will help drive traffic to your site. The next one I'm going to show you here is Insights for Search. And Insights for Search, the, the usefulness of this is around looking for trends specifically in queries. And in this one, I actually won't demo it, but I'll just show you here some screenshots. So we did say the, uh, the query al-ab again. What you'll see here is you'll see the overall interest of that query over time. So if you look at it from 2004 all the way up to 2009, you'll see that over time there is more and more interest in that specific keyword. And like I said, you can pick any specific keyword you like to look for ideas about perhaps what to write about or if there's something in your specific niche that you're interested in writing about. The other thing you'll see that's overlaid here on top of uh, the graph here are all these little markers with uh, various letters on them. And what we're doing here is we're cross-referencing, uh, for example, interesting moments of time where the actual traffic might have increased or the popularity might have increased with specific news articles. And so this can actually give you some indicators around news and what's actually making the headlines and how that impacted that specific keyword. At the same time, within Insights for Search, you can then do what we showed, what we saw before, which is around the regional interest side. So for example, when we looked at al Ab, where is this actually generating a lot of interest in the Middle East? And you'll see, for example, Palestinian uh, territories, Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia. These are places where that specific query is very popular relative to other keywords in those specific regions. So that gives you some insights about you're more, more targeting your, the actual local markets there. You can also look at search terms. And these are search terms that are actually driving traffic uh, to the specific, to, for example, the, uh, the query al -Ab. And you can see other ones here. You can see them as we've uh, seen before, al -Ab, al -Ab flash. And then related to that specific keyword, you can see rising searches. And this is more on the actual uh, searches themselves, which ones are actually rising uh, to the top. And this is more of a trending side. So this is also very interesting to see, for example, if you're doing, uh, again, take the example of Saudi Arabia floods, you can see specifically what are queries related to that that are rising, that are very similar to that in concept. The other neat thing you can do with insights for search is you can say, you know what, I don't want to type in a specific query, but I want to know, for example, in Saudi Arabia over the last 12 months, what are the most popular queries? What are the search terms? What's actually rising there in that country? And there's a drop down right here that allows you to pick any specific country here. And so you can see, for example, if I expand this, actually I can't, unfortunately. I'm not sure if you can, oh, it's cut off. Let me see if I can show you here. Hmm. Okay, I'll fix that, just give me one second. So I'll very quickly pick Saudi Arabia again as the example. And I'll just look at, for example, the last 12 months. If I wanted to, I could perhaps uh, select the last seven days, 30 days, 90 days. And the idea here, you can get a sense for specifically in that time window what's actually very popular. In this case, let's just pick seven days and see what's, uh, what is different now. So here you can actually see what is going, what are the popular search terms in the, la in the span of the last seven days. You can also look at the trends again search-wise in terms of what are the queries that are rising these days uh, within Saudi Arabia. And like I said, you can pick any of these different countries and take a look at it. You can also restrict your search to web search, image, news, and product. And this is very interesting also in that, uh, like I said, you can, uh, you can pick the specific country, you can change the specific span of time, and there's actually a custom filter where if you want, you could add more query terms to restrict it, in addition to, of course, uh, categories. So if you're interested, for example, in automotive, well, let, let, us, let us determine, for example, what are the most popular queries related to automotive in Saudi Arabia for the last seven days. Skip over now. So we'll also talk very quickly about hot trends. So this is basically what are, search, what are users searching for right now? And this is something that launched very recently, this hot topics area right here. This basically is looking at aggregated feeds coming in from, for example, Twitter, uh, from uh, friend feed also. And the idea here is we're actually looking for the specific topics that are actually rising to the top and trending. And here, for example, if you wanted, you could type in uh, within the more hot topics text box right here, you can type in ICT Qatar, for example, and you'll basically see real-time news happening 
uh, about ICT Qatar on Twitter, for example. And a, a, it so happens that as you're actually doing that search, you'll see that it's actually updating in real time the various feeds that are coming in. Hot searches are basically the same thing, but it's showing you a different snapshot, which is related to searches online from Google. I'm not going to touch too much on analytics from a blogging perspective. That's going to be talked about in more detail during the, uh, during the workshop. But the idea here is you want to understand your blog traffic patterns. What's happening on your site? Uh, where are actually, where are users coming from before they come to your site? Are they coming from Google? Are they coming from Facebook, Twitter? Are they coming from somebody else's blog? Analytics will tell you that. And there are various different products that you could use to do this. But this is some of the power that you'll get with an analytics product like this. You can also take a look at top searches. What are the, the top keywords that users are typing in from a search perspective that are driving traffic to your blog? You can also look at the top content, for example. This is the, popular, the most popular content on your website. You can take a look at that and see the actual rank order of that. So lastly here, I'm going to just uh, quickly demo some of these different tools here. One is around auto-translation of your website, oh, sorry, your, your blog. And the idea here with, uh, with Google Translate, you can actually embed Google Translate on your blog. So say you were to write your blog in Arabic or pick any language. Very quickly, you can actually have that blog available in up to 50 different languages. And I'll show you how to do that very quickly. So I will go to Blogger again. Oh, actually, it's right here. And what I'll basically do, oh, sorry, I'll go to Translate. So it's just Google, Google Translate. Let me just bring this window down so you can see it better. Okay. Right here, there's a link here, Tools and Resources. What you can basically do here, I'll just reduce this in size so it displays on the screen here. You can make your website, including your blog, available in up to 50 languages like I talked about, or you can restrict it. So in this case, I'll just say that my actual language of my, uh, my blog is in English for this case. But then I want to make it, for example, available in many different languages. So I can select here from any, any number of the different languages, or I can just say, show me a drop that has all the different languages in it. And so I'll select this. I'll then copy this, this JavaScript right here that it generates. And so I'll just copy that. I'll then go back to my blog. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the dashboard. I'm going to look at layout. And this layout basically describes the overall structure of your blog. And here you can add what we call a gadget. So I'll come in here. And then here there's an actual gadget that you're going to want to add, which is around JavaScript. So this HTML JavaScript gadget is what you're going to add to your blog. I'm going to add that. I'm just going to call this Google Translate. I'm going to paste this here. Say Save. And if all goes well, I should get my translate function right here. So right here now you can see Google Translate is now on your blog. And now I can translate the whole website into all these different languages. So for example, if I chose Arabic here, and actually uh, uh, did the actual translation, you'll actually notice that uh, it actually converted, but for some reason, in the title, it's not connecting the characters. So that's a bug. Good. Okay, I'll look at that later. But you can do this, like I said, in many of the different languages. So you can pick any other language, German, for example. And if you actually did have a lot of text, you would actually convert everything in there for you. So that's a nice feature that you can consider adding on your blog. Another one, another product that uh, we've actually launched is, a, is called Tarib. And the idea behind Tarib is that some people, for example, myself, I have uh, a keyboard that is only Latin characters. I don't have an actual uh, um, Arabic layout on my keyboard. Not only that, I'm not actually used to typing in Arabic on my keyboard itself. And so what you might have seen online is a lot of what they call uh, Arabizi, which is basically people typing Arabic using English or Latin characters. And so what we decided to do, and there's actually some other companies that have done this really successfully, is allow you to type as, as naturally as you would like, and then we'll do the hard work of converting what you've typed into Arabic. And the idea here is we want to promote more Arabic content online. So I'll show you what that looks like very quickly. Uh, there's actually one. So if I just type in Tari, for example, and I get the first, uh, the actual ad that appears, I can now type in anything I'd like here in English using Latin characters but in Arabic, and it'll actually convert it for me. So if I type in Sabah, and you'll notice I'm going to put a 7 here, 
which is the AC letter ha, and I hit a space, it's going to convert that automatically to Arabic for me. I can say al khir ya Qatar and keep on hitting space. And you'll notice that as I'm typing, it's automatically converting that uh, for me to Arabic. And this is really useful. You can see also, sometimes you might not get the actual uh, conversion correct. And you'll see that here you can actually select some other options here that might be the specific uh, word that you're looking for. One thing that I'm happy to announce actually, just uh, yesterday we just launched uh, an actual uh, version of Tadib that is meant for Windows directly. So you can add Tadib directly onto Windows and you can use Tadib across any of the different products, any different applications that is on Windows. So for example, if I go to Google, and here, for example, I cannot do that. So if I typed in sabah, al khair, nothing really happens, right? But with this actual client that we've actually uh, now launched, I can switch my keyboard, and I'm just going to hit Alt-Shift, and you'll notice here at the bottom, uh, this little uh, uh, area displays, and this basically tells me I'm now in tarib mode, so to speak. And so now if I type sabah, you'll see now that it's automatically, again, converting what I've typed into Arabic. And I hit space, and I say al khair, and then I keep going. Uh, I've done the exact same thing, and I can search. That's how easy it is. You can also integrate this into your blog. Tadib is also available today in Gmail, just to give you another idea. Twitter feed, I think I'm actually running out of time, so I won't touch uh, too much on these other ones, but Twitter feed is one that we'll talk more about in the workshop. And the idea with Twitter feed, is that what you can do with Twitter feed if you're writing a blog is you can have the blog post that you're, being, that you're actually creating within Blogger or WordPress, for example. You can have all of those different blog posts, or at least uh, you can have updates going to your Twitter account and also to your Facebook account, in addition to, I believe, a few other ones. So something that rather than you going necessarily directly to Twitter or to Facebook saying, I actually have a new blog post, this will do it for you automatically. Uh, there's also a feature in Facebook you may not be aware of it. Uh, using the notes application in Facebook, you can automatically import your blog directly into your Facebook account. Once you've actually imported it, it'll import all of the previous posts uh, that you've written in addition to any new posts that you create. <clears throat> and lastly, the, uh, the last point I wanted to make around gadgets. I showed you, for example, uh, the JavaScript gadget uh, that you can embed directly into uh, Blogger. There are many other gadgets that you could add. There's a whole library of gadgets, as a matter of fact. Whether you use Blogger or use plugins, for example, in WordPress, there's many to choose from. You could, for example, add polls. Uh, you can add functionality to allow users to subscribe to your blog based on the reader of their choice. Uh, you could, for example, show Twitter updates directly in, embedded within your blog itself. You can also, for example, uh, show your location. If you've ever used Google, Google Latitude, which shows your relative location if you're using a GPS device or say you're connected via sail or, or via Wi-Fi, you can have basically an overlay of a map with your specific location on that. If you so chose, or you can make it, for example, restricted to the city that you live in. And again, also, there are many other different uh, plugins and uh, gadgets that you could add to your website, to your blog, I'm sorry. So lastly, uh, that's basically the, uh, the, the end of my, uh, my, uh, the, the, the presentation I wanted to give. I just wanted to, again, encourage you all, if you haven't already started uh, to blog, that's okay. I'm hoping, like I said, that many people here will start to blog. That being said, there are many different ways of contributing unique, original content online in Arabic, and I'm encouraged to see many people that are actually here, and hopefully soon we'll have many more products and content on the web in Arabic. Thank you.